the word of God. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break to tr the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say if a man says to his father or mother, what other help you might otherwise have received from me is a gift devoted to God. He is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, and their teachings are rules taught by men. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean. But what comes out of his mouth, that is what makes him unclean. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want to start off telling you a little story. and I, it, Some of you may have heard this before. It's one of my favorites. But I know there's probably some people who haven't heard it, maybe not on Facebook, so I've got to say it again. Years ago, back before cell phones, back before the Internet, I'm talking sometime in late 70s, early 80s, I don't remember exactly what year it was, I, my mom was talking to my aunt, and my cousin was sitting in the back seat of the car. My aunt was sitting in her car, and my mom's standing there by the car talking, and I don't know what they were talking about. I, I was probably doing something to keep myself occupied, and I hear my cousin in the back say, I want to go in the store with you. And I hear my aunt say, your feet are dirty, you're not going anywhere. I'm going in by myself. So they're talking again, and, and I'm not paying attention until I hear my cousin speak up and say, my feet are clean now. And she, my aunt turns around, and my cousin had licked his feet clean. Licked them clean. I know. <laughs> but if we were to tell that to Jesus, what would he say? Would he say, does that make that my cousin unclean? No. We just read about it. What goes into the mouth, goes into the stomach and passes through, that doesn't make you unclean. But what comes out? Now that thought for my, my cousin to lick his feet clean, well, we can't blame him. He was probably five, six years old at the time. Okay? I still don't know if he got to go into the store or not either. But. but First, I guess we need to back up and ask ourselves, what does Jesus mean when he says clean and unclean? What's, what's going on here? Okay, some of us may not understand that. It's from Leviticus chapter 11 is really the, is not the only place, but that's the biggest place that he talks about clean and unclean. Um, in Leviticus chapter 11, God is talking about certain things that can be eaten that are clean, meaning that they won't defile you if you eat them. Well, wait a minute. Did we just say that what goes into the mouth doesn't defile the person? Yeah, but there was a reason God did this. He was building up for what Jesus was going to say. So at the time, they didn't have Jesus. They had the law. And they had to stay as close to the law as possible. Okay? So that they, that was their righteousness in a sense. And so part of it was, if you eat this, you're okay. If you don't eat this, that's good. And if you do this sort of thing, like the ceremonial thing, you're clean, and if you don't, you're unclean. If you touch a dead body, you're now unclean. And there was, if you had leprosy, you were unclean. 
all kinds of ceremonial things that were leading up to what Jesus was going to talk about, okay? So for the Pharisees and the, and the disciples at the time who were hearing this, this made a lot of sense, clean and unclean, okay? It wasn't about somebody being dirty or eating something off the floor. They didn't have the five-second rule back then where, you know, you, you drop your lollipop. Oh, one, two, three, okay, I'm good. You know, it wasn't anything like that. This was ceremonial, okay? It was very religious, very religious. And Jesus had, one of the reasons he came, the main reason he came was to die on the cross. We know that, right? But one of the reasons he came was to set the record straight. Let me give you an example. If you go down the road here, and I don't know what the speed limit is here in Belair. I don't even know if we have speed limit signs in Belair. But let's say there's a sign there that says speed limit 25, okay? And you're doing 45, okay? And you pass a cop. Is that speed limit sign going to pull you over and write you a ticket? No. But is that cop going to pull you over and write you a ticket? More than likely, yes. Is it deserved? Yes, you just broke the law. So that speed limit sign is there to tell you what the law is. It is not there to write you a ticket. Okay? So it's just a signpost. And that's what the law of God was intended to be, a signpost. You don't do these things, you're breaking the law, you are sinning. If he didn't give us the law, we wouldn't know what a sin was. Because we have something in us that makes us unclean. And it's called sin. When Adam and Eve ate from that tree, it came into us. We're born with it. We are born with it, and we can't get rid of it on our own. Now, there are children who are born these days with, they carry the illnesses that their parents have, like especially if the mom is, um, for example, if the mom drinks during pregnancy, there's fetal alcohol syndrome. Or if the mom has certain diseases, perhaps the child will have that disease too. And I don't know the science of it, and I don't know what they all are, but I don't want to get into that. But what I'm saying is, when we're born into this world through our parents, we're born with this. We can't get rid of it. And every single one of us, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But then he follows it up with, but Jesus Christ is the answer to that problem. See, God doesn't say, you guys are all terrible. I don't want nothing to do with you. He says, I want you to see what's clean and unclean. I want you to see what's good, what's bad. I want you to understand. And then I'm going to bring my son. When the time is right, he's going to be your sacrifice to make up for all that stuff that you did. So Jesus is trying to tell them, right in the beginning here, he's saying, look, people, it's not about eating with dirty hands. Okay? That's something that you made up. That's something you made up. Let me give you another example. You may have heard this before, too. I use this all the time as well. So we've got a speed limit sign that says 25, okay? Let's, let's bump it up. We'll say it's 35, okay? They, they're going to let us go a little faster in Belair now. So somebody gets the idea, if we don't go past 35, we're not breaking the law. So let's make a speed limit sign that says speed limit 30, okay? That way, if we don't go past 30, we'll never go past 35, and therefore we won't break the law. And someone says, you know what, they give you five miles over, somebody's going to think they're doing 30 and they're going to be doing 35, and what if they accidentally do 36? Let's bump it down. You can't go past 25. So they put up another sign that says speed limit 25. Now if you go five miles over, you're still only going 30, you're not going 35, you're not breaking the law. So we put these extra laws in place, okay, to keep us from breaking the law. That's what the Pharisees did. That's why they said if you eat with dirty hands, you're unclean. They didn't consider what, the, what was coming about, that Jesus was going to be the one who free us from all this, this law, the burden of the law. They just simply said, we don't want to break that law, so we're going to build another law, and we're going to build another law, and we're going to build another one, and it became tradition. And Jesus said, that's not what it's about, everybody. It's about me. It's not about the law. 
It's about me. So that's why he said this, what he said in Matthew 15. Now his disciples, Jesus th- saying, you guys should know this. You should know this stuff. Why are you so, still so dull? Don't you know that it's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean? Don't you know where the problem is? It's in your heart. That's where it begins. That's the thing that needs to be cleaned. That's the problem. That's what I'm here for. Let's take care of this right now. That's what Jesus was saying. Let's get your heart clean. So we know this, right? As Christians, we know that Jesus came and died on the cross for us. We, we can look back. We can see what happened. We've been taught. We've gone to church. You know, we, we understand. Perhaps Javier didn't understand as much, but now he does. And maybe, maybe you don't understand as much, but what I'm saying is, when we know this, you think we're not like the Pharisees in some way still? Don't we try to add a little bit to make sure we don't make God mad? I think we do. Let me, let me give you an example. I mean, this, this has nothing to do with what I'm saying, but just as an illustration. I've seen pictures of this church with turquoise walls. Does anybody remember the turquoise walls? few of you remember the turquoise walls? Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. And now they're white, peeling a little bit over there, but that's another issue. But why did we paint the walls white instead of turquoise? Is it because nobody likes turquoise anymore? (laughs) Because we've moved on and we're in better times? So we cover something up because times have changed, right? Let's face it, that's why we did it. White looks a little bit better than turquoise in these days, so we painted them white instead of turquoise. But if we were to go back to the 1800s, what color were the walls? Anybody remember? (laughs) Okay, good. That's good. (laughs) That's real good. But God knows. And we have a little glimpse. If you were to look in this bell tower over here, up in where we have like a storage area, you could see brick all around, just like what's on the outside. I don't know for sure. I haven't seen pictures, but I can imagine this entire sanctuary just being brick, okay? Now imagine a dirt floor, okay? I don't know, maybe they had wood, I don't know, but maybe it was a dirt floor. I'm sure they didn't have pews, maybe chairs, maybe boxes or crates, okay? But as the time went on, they built up those who came before us, they put carpeting, well, I know some of you put the carpeting down, they painted, they put the pews in, padded the pews, and who knows, in a couple years, maybe we'll have something even more. We, we got Facebook now. That's something that they didn't have 10, 15 years ago. So times change. We add things to it, okay? But we have to remember, no matter what we add, it's not to prevent what's in here. We can never cover up what's in here on our own. We can't use these things to make us feel like we are covering this up. We can't say this is a beautiful church to, to make it take away our sin. It can't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. This is a beautiful church, and I pray that it stays a beautiful church, and that as we continue to grow, we make it even more beautiful and make it welcoming for the people that will come. But we've got to remember that's a cover-up. That's covering up turquoise walls, okay? We need Jesus for what's in here. That's what he was trying to tell us. And without him in here, it doesn't matter what we do. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot. And we try. And we realize that we try and we go to God and say, I'm sorry. We might call it self-righteousness. We might call it being a hypocrite. We, there's all kinds of names for it. But we cannot. And what the, when we accept daily and go to God daily knowing that we cannot change what's in here then what comes out of here will start to change what comes out of the mouth is what defiles the person murder, adultery, sexual immorality theft, false testimony, slander these are what defile a person but eating without un, without washed hands does not defile the person. So it's one thing to know that we can't solve what's in here without Jesus. What can we do about the things that even though we know Jesus, 
still come out of here. Don't tell me they don't. We're all human beings. I know. We at times, at, Pastor Ian's doing a whole series on it. Where's those arrows? You know, throwing those fiery darts at everybody. It comes from the mouth. God tells us many ways in the Bible about our mouths. James tells us to bridle the tongue. The book of Proverbs tells us seven things that God doesn't like. And three or four of them involve the mouth. What comes out of the mouth? When you lie to someone, words come out. Right? When the words come out, they can be harmful. We can tear someone down. We can tell lies that might lead to misinformation and cause people to make wrong decisions. We can really cause a lot of harm with what comes out of our mouths. Now, it's not just our mouth. You know, the heart is engaged with the brain, and the brain says, I'm going to reach my hands out, I'm going to do something with my hands that pick up something that doesn't belong to me. You know, things like that. There's no words involved in that. It's all the actions of the mind engaged with the heart. But once the heart is clean and becomes cleaner, that's when fewer of those things happen. See, Jesus won't make you sinless. He will make you sin less. You get that? He won't make you sinless. He will make you sin less. Now, we all strive for the day that we are absolutely perfect. But that day will come when we are in heaven. We still deal with it. Romans chapter 7 is a fantastic book. It's hard to read. Paul's kind of all over the place. But if you can read Romans chapter 7, you'll see yourself in there. He's struggling with sin. This very thing I want to do, I don't do. The very thing I know I should do, I don't do. And the very thing that I do, my flesh is telling me not to do. He's going back and forth, struggling with sin. It's a good read. But what I'm saying is, how do we get this part clean? We know that Jesus is the cure for what we're born with. He is the cure. The cross is a cure. They're trying to find a cure for the coronavirus right now. And I heard this week, actually, that they've got a vaccine. We'll see if it pans out. I sure hope it does. But the cure for this is Jesus Christ. That gets us to heaven. But I'll tell you what, there will be people in heaven who their whole life have been lying and stealing, okay? Because they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and they've asked for forgiveness and they really are trying. But what we're seeing is the opposite. And we might be surprised by seeing them in heaven, but because they're clean in here, the cure has been applied, they'll be in heaven if God so sees to it. But, wouldn't it be great to not be one of those people, to be one of those people that wholeness, goodness, kindness, love, patience, gentleness, self-control, the fruits of the Spirit. Wouldn't it be great to have those come out? Wouldn't it be great to have those things coming out of our mouth and our hands and of our thoughts every single day? Yeah, but, you know, I just, there's just things that happen and it just causes me to, makes me angry. Yeah, I get it. We deal with a lot of things. We deal with the flesh. We deal with the enemy who's constantly, constantly stirring up thoughts in our mind, barraging us with thoughts and speaking into our ears. I get it. We're spiritual beings. Whether we like to admit it or whether we understand it, we are spiritual beings. We deal with evil spirits. Okay, But there's plenty of good spirits that fight those evil spirits for us, too. Put on the armor of God. What about the flesh? Paul said we need to crucify the flesh. Now, I'm not asking all of you to hang yourself on a cross. What I mean is, daily, go to God. Like I had you do in the call to worship. Go to God and say, God, here's what I've done. Or, here's what I'm thinking about doing. If you've never done that, if you've never been tempted and gone to God and say, God, look, let's just face it, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Can you help me? If you've never done that, do it. Because I guarantee you what's going to happen is those thoughts are going to leave your mind. When you take it to God, 
he will come to your aid. He will take it away for you. Now, it may take a couple of times of going to him, but if, after a while, you're going to get to the point where, God, I'm having that thought. There it goes. Okay? It's going to be like that. Take it to him. Keep engaged with him daily, and that will continue to clean your heart. What is dark and ugly is not just putting paint over it to make it look better. It's putting something spiritual in there. It's called the Holy Spirit. And it cleanses us and makes us more like Him. Yeah, we're going to still fail. It's going to happen. We know it. But the more we go to Him and ask Him to make a difference, it's going to happen. It has to happen. Because He promised us it would happen. And it will. We can be better people. We can be people that other people want to be around. You know why you want to be around people that are good people? Because it makes you feel better. Because you know there's something that's not good about you. And if I get around this good person, maybe I'll be good. Okay? But remember, it's not that person that's doing it for you. You can't just be around good people to become a better person. It won't work. That's why you want to be around good people. But to be a better person, you can't get it from me, you can't get it from Pastor Ian, you can't get it from your spouse, you can't get it from anyone. You get it from God. Now, I want to close with this thought. There are some things in this life that Paul referred to them as strongholds, okay? And they can be hard to dismantle. And sometimes God will want it to be with either prayer and fasting or he might sometimes have you go to someone who is, he has built up who he has given this gift to to deliver you from this stronghold so I just want to say if there's anybody who feels like they have a stronghold in their lives, they want to get rid of they want somebody to pray over them to lay hands on them, the Bible tells us to lay hands on people for healing it's spiritual healing let me know, let Pastor Ian know. We can and will help you. Let us know. Don't be afraid. Because if you don't tell us, we're not, well, we might know. But we're not going to know unless you tell us, okay? But we want, God wants you to step, take that step forward and say to someone, I need help. Now, we don't do the work. God does it through us, okay? But I'm telling you, we can help. Let us know. So remember, please wash your hands before you eat. <laughs> but that's not what defiles you. It's what's already in there. And that's what we can make stop coming out by going to God daily and asking him to just chip away at that. Every day. Every day. If you forget one day, don't beat yourself up. That's the enemy telling you you're not going to do no good. Go to him the next day. He understands. If you're a parent... If your child came to you and said, Mom, Dad, I need help, would you not help them? Most of us would. Absolutely. No matter what it is, they don't have to be afraid. And, you know, when we're younger, we often think we can't go to our parents, but then when we become parents, we realize, oh, if I would have gone to my parents, I could have been so much further off. So kids, if you're listening, go to your parents. If you need to go to your parents go to your parents, they will help. Go to God. He will help. You don't have to hide from him. He will help. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for being our redeemer, for being our cleanser, for sending your spirit into us to, to redeem us and cleanse us and make us whole, to make us good people, to make us people that other people want to be around. So help us to stop using our mouths in ways that are not fruitful. Instead, Lord, fill us with your spirit that we may become fruitful. Fill us every day. Remind us to come to you every day that we can be fruitful every single day of our lives. That we can be clean. We ask this of you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.